In this video, we're going to give a little bit more mathematical explanation for the formula for standard deviation. Namely, why it has this whole summation of x minus mu squared statement. And then we take the square root of that. We talked intuitively why squaring is a good idea rather than leaving it alone. If you leave it alone, you get zero. If you take absolute value, it tends to have small errors play a more dominant role than we'd like. But in this video, I want to give you more of a mathematical explanation, not a scientific one. The point is, this formula for standard deviation, more or less, is just the distance formula in n dimensional space. So, just to give you a reminder, uh, go back to your algebra class. If I have two points, x1, x2, and y1, y2, and I'm using x and x and y and y rather than x and y because in two dimensions you can say, oh, first coordinate's x, second one's y. Three dimensions you can say, well, x, y, and then third coordinate is z. But once you get past three dimensions, I mean, you're out of letters. So it, usually if people are working in more than three dimensions, they just say, okay, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 for the coordinates of the single point. So here's my first point. That's why I'm using just x's in one point and just y's in the other. It's because pretty soon I'm going to leave two dimensions and go to n dimensions. So, so the, our distance formula. The distance between these two points is, well, let's just take, subtract the horizontals, or the first coordinates, or whatever you want to call it, square it, subtract the verticals, or the second coordinates, square it, and take the square root. And where this came from is just Pythagorean theorem. If you draw a triangle, this is x1, x2. This is y1, y2. Well, the distance you want is the straight across, but you can break that down into horizontal and vertical. This is a right triangle. This bottom distance, well, if you forget about going up and down, you're going from x1, ending it at, at y1. So this is x1 minus y1. Same thing, the vertical distance. Well, if you forget about horizontal, you're starting at x2, ending at y2, so you're going x2 minus y2. And then Pythagorean theorem says to get the distance across, you square these, add them up, take the square root. So you have square the first one, square the second one, add them up, take the square root, scoot over Pythagorean theorem. Right? Well, this is two dimensions. In three or four or five or however many dimensions, it's really just the same thing. So, if I have points in a bunch of dimensions, well, all we're going to do is subtract each coordinate that goes with each other, square them, add them together, and go. So, the distance is just the square root of, well, you go x1 minus y1 squared, x2 minus y2 squared, plus so on and so forth, until you finally get to xn minus yn squared. So that's kind of the Pythagorean theorem in any number of dimensions. Is this guy is your distance. So, how does this look anything like that up here? Well, remember what this sigma notation means. It means just plug in every value of x you have, and then add them all up. If we were to take this guy and write him out, well, the numerator, anyway, of our sigma is just 
our first x minus the mean squared, our second x minus the mean squared, our third x, fourth x, however many x's we have, and then our last x minus the mean squared. These two formulas look exactly the same. The only difference is that this one has the mean for all the y's. So this numerator here, which I guess I need some more space, so let me start over. This numerator for sigma, numerator anyway, all it is is the distance from the point x1, x2, our actual data points that we got to the point that's just the mean over and over again. Okay, and why is this a good thing to do? Well, first of all, I think it's intuitively makes sense if, if I just have the mean over and over again Everybody's in the middle, so my distribution just looks like that. Here's the mean, and everybody is right there. Then this distribution isn't spread out at all. So this should have zero standard deviation. What I'm using for my general standard deviation, well, it's, I know what I want no standard deviation to be. So in general, it's just how far is the distribution I have from that one. And by how far, I mean the actual just good old-fashioned high school geometry distance between these two points. So that's why this expression for standard deviation is a really intuitive thing to do because it really is just how far apart they, these points are. The reason we don't present that way in statistics class is because usually you haven't seen distance in high dimensional space. I mean, if we had 10 sample points, that would mean our standard deviation is the distance in 10 dimensional space. Most people have a hard time visualizing what 10 dimensional space looks like. But yeah, standard deviation is just distance in some high dimensional space. And if you go on in math, you find out that all these things you learn to do in algebra, there's another class called linear algebra. Everything you've already learned how to do, you can do it in 10 dimensions just as easy as you do it in one. It's, you have to develop a little bit more complicated machinery, but that's, there's nothing harder about doing geometry in 10 dimensions than in one. So if we have this expression, which is just distance in 10 dimensions, that's not that hard of a thing to work with. We know how to work with distance, so that's why math people like to use this particular measure. 